Hello boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's episode, we're going back in time, way back to the 1930s, the Great Depression. And we're gonna make Hoover Stew. And what is Hoover Stew? Well, basically it's a concoction of hot dogs, macaroni pasta, sweet corn, tin tomatoes, and like a bit of seasoning. And it was also designed to feed a lot of people for not very much money. And it was served in soup kitchens all across America in what were called Hoovervilles, or like shanty towns. And Hoovervilles were named after then president Herbert Hoover during the Great Depression. I'm sure this is gonna be the easiest, quickest recipe I've ever done, surely. There's very few ingredients and I've never tried it before, so this is a first. First time for me as well. There's lots of different kind of tweaks and twists that you can do to this, and I'll put some swap outs on the screen, but this is the most basic version where it all started. So let's get on and make it, but before we do, do the usual thing. Like, share, subscribe, all that kind of lovely jazz. Thank you very much. Mm, bit of a slurp. No Rattler today shop run out. Share these recipes to your friends, your family, and the people in need. So come on, let's get on with it. Let's make some Hoover stew. Right, so here's a quick rundown of what's in our Hoover stew. Got a couple of tins of chopped tomatoes. They were 28 pence each. Again, I'll put the costs on the screen. Got some green giant sweet corn. That was, well, that's about 285 grams drained weight. I've got some pre-cooked macaroni as well. Just pop that in a bowl. I added a little bit of oil just to help it stop sticking together. And also here, we've got our hot dogs. These are actually kielbasa. I'm not a huge lover of hot dogs, to be honest. So I'm gonna replace mine with kielbasa, but if you're using like a can of hot dogs, you'll get this even cheaper. So come on, let's get on. Let's make this Hoover stew. It's gonna be like done in quick time, this. And the only real bit of prep here is cooking your macaroni and slicing up your hot dogs. Kielbasa. And all I'm going to do with these is cut them into little coins, little rounds. Except for that bit, that's mine. Sort of like that thickness. So I'll get on with this, see you in a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just, well, start cooking, I guess. Get these tins of tomatoes open. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit skeptical of this. There is so few ingredients, I don't quite know if it's gonna be any good or not, but I have faith. I will have faith. And I'm gonna get that onto a heat. Come on. Oh, he's flipping, pissing. I will definitely not miss this oven, you know, when I move. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm trying to burn myself. Whilst it's coming to a simmer, I'm going to add a little pinch of salt. Not too much because I didn't, didn't tell you this earlier, but when I cooked the macaroni, I saved the pasta water. Because at the end, if it's too thick, we're gonna just kind of let it down with some of that pasta water. And I've salted the pasta water, only add a little bit, and we can adjust it at the end. Good old twist of black pep. Give that a good old stir. And I'll bring you back when it's simmering. So, tomatoes are starting to simmer away. And I'm gonna go in with our hot dogs, or kielbasa in this case. Again, less that bit. Um, um. And these have got a nice smoky flavour as well, which I imagine is what you know the flavour of the hot dogs brings to this. Next I'm going to go in with our drained sweet corn. And I know I said earlier I was kind of like a bit reserved about this, whether it's going to be good or not, but sometimes you have to look back in time to solve a current problem. You know, back in the sort of 1930s, the Great Depression, people had bugger all. And now we've got bugger all. So this could actually be a bit of a revelation. But tell me in the comments, have you had Hoover stew before? Is it something you make at home? If so, what do you put in it? Do you stick to this kind of basic recipe or do you add other bits and pieces? Let me know in the comments. So I'm gonna bring that back up to temperature and I'm gonna leave that to simmer for about 10 minutes. Just so everything can kind of get to know each other really. But we'll see, be right back. So it's been a good, good 10 minutes of simmering. What I'm going to do now is add the pasta. In it goes. Because this is already cooked, so all it really needs is warming up. And all I'm going to do is just warm this pasta through. It does look a little dry, just a touch. So I'm going to add a little splash of the pasta water. So we're done, boys and girls. Switch that off. And I'm going to serve me a portion. Uh, yeah, I haven't got any. I haven't got any. Bloody fly in here. Get out. This is my house. 
Now it's, it's about a week later after filming, right? And I'm just stitching this bit on the end. Um, I forgot to press record, didn't I? So there I was, chomping away, wasn't recording. Apologies for that. And if I look a bit tired, it's because I am. I've not been up long, hence the cup of tea. Ugh, Yorkshire's finest. So yeah, I didn't record it, but all I can tell you is it was delicious. It was really nice. Very surprised actually, so few ingredients, minimal cooking, it was great. It had like a smoky taste from the sausage, a bit of sweetness as well from the corn, and that pasta as well. It was really good actually. I'd say make it, then see for yourself. And that big pan, what, you'd feed five, maybe six people? So again, apologies for that. Didn't taste it on camera because I'm a numpty and forgot to press record, but it was good, make it. Who knew, depression cooking, see? Sometimes the older ways are the best. But anyway, I'm gonna go make another cup of tea, wake myself up and do some chores. This flat's a bleeding mess. Do the usual thing, like, share, subscribe, share this to your friends and family, the people that are in need. And I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And ta-ta for now. Oh, wakey wakey.